So we have a very good relationship. And I also have a very good relationship, as you know, with President Putin. And I think uh, if we win, I think we're going to get it resolved very quickly. Very well. I really think we're going to get it resolved. I hope we have more good relations. We're going to have. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, it takes two to tango, you know. As the Biden administration continues to pledge their continuous support for Ukraine, friction continues to grow between Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and Donald Trump. Zelensky arrived in the United States this week to attend the United Nations General Assembly and meet with US leadership to try to gain more support and military aid ahead of the November election. Zelensky met with Biden and Harris yesterday where they both pledged full support to Ukraine, but Biden did not give any mention of greenlighting Zelensky's request for US long range missiles to be fired into Russia. Instead, Biden said the following, the United States will provide Ukraine with the support it needs to win this war. Biden said in a statement on Thursday ahead of his White House meeting with Zelensky. Biden further pledged to ensure that all funding so far approved for Ukraine is dispersed before he leaves office in January 2025 and what he described as a surge in security assistance totaling nearly $8 billion. Trump, who has long been critical of US aid to Ukraine, wasn't as welcoming, especially following Zelensky's New Yorker interview released this week, where he criticized Trump for how quickly he thinks he can end the war. Now, remember during the presidential debate earlier this month, uh, Trump quick, uh, cr he, he was criticized for how quickly he thought he could end the war only stating, I just want the war to stop. My feeling is that Trump doesn't really know how to stop the war, even if he might think he knows how. With this war, oftentimes the deeper you look at it, the less you understand. I've seen many leaders who were convinced that they knew how to end it tomorrow, and as they waded deeper into it, they realized it's not that simple. Additionally, he also called Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, too radical. His message seems to be that Ukraine must make a sacrifice. This brings us back to the question of cost and who shoulders it. The idea that the world should end this war at Ukraine's expense is unacceptable. But I do not consider this co the concept of his a plan in any formal sense. This would be an awful idea if a person were actually going to carry it out to make Ukraine shoulder the costs of stopping the war by giving up its territories. Obviously, these jabs at Trump didn't sit well with him. And he went on a little bit of a tirade during a economic speech that took place in North Carolina on Wednesday, two days before the duo's meeting. Take a look. The president of Ukraine is in our country and he's making little nasty aspersions toward your favorite president, me. But take a look at the war happening right now in Ukraine. It would have never happened if I were president to start off with. Let's say we did settle. And a deal would have been made with Russia years ago, three years ago, before it all began. And we could have made a deal easily. Could have made it easily. If we had a president who was intelligent, we could have made a deal easily. But what do you have left now, right? Three years of horrible fighting. The country is absolutely obliterated. Millions and millions of people including all of these great soldiers, they're dead. And he continued saying Zelensky is the greatest salesman on earth. Take a look. And Biden and Kamala allowed this to happen by feeding Zelensky money and munitions like no country has ever seen before. Every time he came to our country, he'd walk away with $60 billion. He's probably the greatest salesman on earth. But now Ukraine is running out of soldiers. They're using young children and old men because their soldiers are dying. Ukraine is gone. It's not Ukraine anymore. You can never replace those cities and towns and you can never replace the dead people, so many dead people. Any deal, even the worst deal, would have been better than what we have right now. If they made a bad deal, it would have been much better. They would have given up a little bit and everybody would be living. And hey, don't scroll away. 
come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. Now notice what Trump didn't talk about. Notably, Trump did not attack Putin's reason, uh, reasoning for launching the invasion, only suggesting Putin would not have started the war had Trump been in office. He did say of Putin, he's no angel. Oh, he's no angel. There you go, both sides, guys, right? Wow. Okay. Yeah, well. <laughs> so uh, he said, you cannot replace the dead people. Oh, that one's true. Okay, nice. Um, so if you're wondering what's going on here, basically Trump is saying, just let Russia keep uh, part of Ukraine, about 20% of Ukraine. And so, look, it's a very difficult situation. And I gotta be honest with you, that might be where it lands at the end. And that is heartbreaking for the people of Ukraine. Uh, and it's amazing that they defended the other 80% against one of the largest militaries in the world. Uh, but Trump is being pretty blithe about it. Like, well, yeah, so what? Yeah, you gotta make a deal. Sometimes you gotta make a bad deal. I mean, it's a bad deal for Ukraine. It's a great deal for my friend Vladimir Putin, right? So this whole idea of I could prevent the wars, it's just, I mean, I know MAGA believes it, but no one else does. It's just a stupid, braggadocious thing that a, a you know con man like Donald Trump says. Uh, and remember, uh, for Donald Trump, like we just moved past it. Jordan said it. A lot of news outlets say it, and then we're so used to it that we don't uh, pause on it. I'm going to pause. You know, Zelensky made one comment that Jordan told you guys about. Where it could be interpreted as, hey, Donald Trump might not know exactly what he's talking about here. JD Vance might be wrong about ceding territory to Russia, etc. Because he's defending his own country and saying we should not give up a piece of it, it is being interpreted as being slightly rude to Donald Trump. So, Donald Trump, now we're all acknowledged, might change US policy because someone was slightly rude to him. You shouldn't get used to that. That's a really weird, pathetic, weak, and maniacal thing to do. If I was the president and somebody was rude to me, I wouldn't be like, no, my feelings are hurt. That's it, we're changing our policy on Norway. I hate them now. A child would do that, a pathetic, pathetic loser would do that. And we've all gotten used to it because it's Donald Trump and we all know he's a moron. I mean, he ran Then maybe we shouldn't elect him, how about that? He ran for president because Barack Obama roasted him at a the comedy dinner at the White House uh, Correspondence Center. So, yeah, you're, you're 100 percent right about that. Well, I've never heard Donald Trump say that anyone was the best in the world at anything except himself. So when he said that Zelensky is the best salesman in the world, I was, what <laughs> what happened? To, where's the Donald Trump we know and love? Uh, and you know, uh, I think that when you, I, I've been out with you know these MAGA people as you mentioned and. To a person, they all say, all of them, and it's not just 20 people at this point, it's hundreds and hundreds who I've spoken to. They all say that if Trump had been in office, these wars, both in the Middle East and Ukraine and, and Russia, would, would never have happened. So Joe Biden has caused wars uh, because Donald Trump would have prevented. There's obviously no way to disprove or prove that to them, but it's it's because he says these things and they you know they reiterate it and they do and so this is Donald Trump to a T right here saying that I alone can fix this. Yeah, I just quickly want to comment on what Michael just said there because um, Donald Trump never explains how he would prevent the wars. MAGA never explains how they, he would prevent the wars. So that's why when Rudy Giuliani was on the Young Turks during the RNC, I asked him. You know, what does that mean? How would he prevent the wars? And Rudy explained, yeah, he would threaten them that he was crazy and might launch an attack against them and maybe even nuke them. And that's how he would prevent the wars. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, like, hey, implicitly, it's the Nixon madman theory. And Rudy literally said, Nixon's madman theory, right? Yeah. So, MAGA, you think you're anti war, but the guy that's in charge of your movement, would threaten to use nuclear weapons against other countries. And remember, all you have to do is like, if you call his bluff, then we're all screwed. And he bluffs nonstop. So we're in World War III the minute somebody hurts his ego or calls his bluff. Yeah, and not to, I'm sorry to jump on what you're saying, Jamie, it's true. Like, you know, who is he pals with? He's pals with Putin and Netanyahu. I mean, at the debate, he was saying, he's already spoken to people. I don't know if that, if that jumped out to you guys. When I was watching the debate, I thought, 
that's that's actually breaking protocol. If if he knows that he's going to resolve Israel and Gaza, does that imply that a former president has been having clandestine conversations with uh, with the prime minister, the president of Israel? I don't know, but I mean that he even said that made me think that. So this is both dangerous for who he's bedfellows with, and also because he's probably breaking the law. I I, I think we can all agree that. Trump is not the peace candidate, and I think people on the left who thought that in 2016 were proven foolish. Uh, I, I do think we should save some room for analysis and an evaluation of how Democrats have operated over the past couple cycles. And within just even looking at the Biden campaign and the Biden administration, right? So the good, pulling out of Afghanistan, the anti-war right, what'd they do? How have they spent the past couple years? They've been criticizing it, lamenting it, blaming him for how haphazard it was, despite Trump setting that timeline. Biden simply executed it. You could argue that some of the details and some of the management were improper or insufficient, sure. But he ended that war despite every president up until that point during the war on terror saying they would. So I also wanna talk about the war in Ukraine and the vacuum that Democrats have left for even conversations around diplomacy. You might remember a year or two ago, progressives, I think a year ago, progressives sent a letter or were drafting a letter saying, hey, there should be some space for conversations about a diplomatic end to this conflict. And they were basically hit with a cudgel saying, no, there's no room for that. How dare you? How dare you undermine the president? And all that has done is prolonged this suffering for people in Ukraine, people who had nothing to do with the conflict, at all whatsoever and are suffering or displaced as a result and God forbid killed, but many of them have been. There should be room for diplomacy and there isn't. I'm, it's going to be difficult because you're talking about someone like Putin, but the fact that we can't even have progressives call for it or even talk about it in a letter is chilling to me. And then you have Zelensky saying, well, we want US long range missiles being fired into Russia. Think about what that looks like. Think about the consequences. If you're really worried about the well-being of Ukrainians, that's not going to end well because it's only going to escalate things. So there should be more deliberate and focused conversations around a diplomatic diplomatic end. And of sure to his point, Ukrainians shouldn't bear the entire brunt of the solution or the resolution, of course. But when he's talking about long-range missiles being fired into Russia, that is horrifying. Yeah, so last two things for me is, Look, Donald Trump does everything for personal gain. And so if you remember, uh, he got impeached for asking Zelensky for dirt on Biden. He said, basically, I'll change US foreign policy depending on whether you make up some evidence against my political opponent or you don't, right? So, so he doesn't care about the rest of us and what our foreign policy should be or how it would affect the average American. He only cares about himself. And he's demonstrated that in this particular case over and over again with Ukraine. Now, but. Nevertheless, Jordan is also right. Two things can be right at the same time. Uh, and the idea of Ukraine firing long range missiles, in, US long range missiles into Russia is a terrible idea. So we've got now, as painful as it is, and as the, the compromises we make will have to be painful. And that's what happens in peace negotiations. Neither side gets exactly what it wants. It, both sides have to sacrifice. You don't get to make peace with your friends. You have to make peace with your enemies, but Ukraine firing rockets into Russia is an epic disaster. I, I feel their pain, I understand why they want to do it, but it's one thing that they want to do it. It's another thing if we finance it and we shouldn't do that. Michael, last word. Uh, yeah, I would I would have to agree. I think it's nuanced too, and I think it, these are you know in in solving and resolving war, uh, hearing that there's a chance even that U.S. missiles will be employed, probably does change the the calculation of of the people negotiating on the Russian side as well, which is why which is why. Jordan saying diplomacy, right? Let's let's do this diplomacy. That's what diplomacy is. It's not always pretty, right? It's not always gentlemen in 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 coats and ties shaking hands with each other. It's threatening too, and and starting from that point. So uh, you know maybe there's a reason for it other than the saber. And maybe it's just saber rattling. Yeah, I got you. Uh, as long as the diplomacy at the end, saber rattling threats or otherwise, actually gets to a peace deal, which is of course what the whole world is rooting for. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. 
you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.